The airfoil is the heart of an airplane. The airfoil you choose should have characteristics suited to the way you want your design to fly. But there are hundreds of airfoils to choose from. So how do you make this important decision? The final selection of an airfoil depends on your design's mission profile or how you want your design to perform. For a sailplane, you need high lift, low drag, and low pitching moments. For an aerobatic model, a symmetrical airfoil will give it the ability to fly upright and invert it equally well. For a sport model, a moderately cambered airfoil will provide a high lift coefficient, low drag and pitching moment coefficients, along with a gentle stall. Now we will see how these factors come into play while choosing an airfoil. Airfoils can be classified into three broad categories, heavily cambered, moderately cambered, and no camber or symmetrical. To select an airfoil for your design, you should know how to read airfoil plots. These plots contain information that can be used to compare different airfoils. Let's take the example of the NACA 2412 airfoil. The horizontal line is the angle of attack, called alpha. This is the angle at which the moving air strikes the airfoil's cord line. The vertical line shows the lift coefficient or CL. Keeping all things equal, a greater CL means more lift. In this region, the CL increases with an increase in alpha. This is the maximum CL for this airfoil, after which an increase in angle of attack will cause a stall. As it can be seen, this airfoil starts lifting at a negative angle of attack. This is because the airfoil has camber. For comparison, check this plot for a no camber or symmetrical airfoil, the NACA 0012. This airfoil has zero lift at zero degrees angle of attack. Thus, greater camber increases the CL max. This also means that the lift curve shifts to the left so that the angle of zero lift becomes more negative. Another important aspect for selection of an airfoil is the stall pattern. There are three major types of stalls. These are sharp, sudden lift laws, and gentle. Pitching moment is the nose up or nose down tendency of an airfoil. Negative pitching moment means that the airfoil tends to lower its nose. The more heavily cambered the airfoil is, the greater negative pitching moment it has. It is important to note that the graphs change with the change in Reynolds number. Reynolds number reflects both speed and cord. Generally, low Reynolds numbers mean lesser CL and more CD. Low Reynolds number also means that the stall will occur at a lower angle of attack. The final selection of an airfoil depends on your design's mission profile or how you want your design to perform. For a sailplane, you need high lift, low drag, and low pitching moments. As sailplanes are slow, they see a low Reynolds number. Reynolds number affects how the airfoil behaves, and thus this must also be considered while choosing the airfoil. For an aerobatic model, a symmetrical airfoil with low pitching moment will be good, as it will be able to fly upright or invert it equally well. Also, the airfoil should have a sharp stall so that the airplane performs spins and snap rolls. Including all this, you would want as high CL max as can be found. For a sport model, a moderately cambered airfoil with gentle stall can be used. This is because it will have a high CL max, low drag and moderate pitching moment. So in summary, to choose your airfoil, first decide how you want your plane to fly, then look at various airfoil plots that will allow this kind of flight and choose the best one. Thank you for watching this video.